finished college in Rio and then moved to Campinas to do graduate studies in ecology. And by that time, I already knew that I wanted to do something related to interactions and to evolutionary ecology. So I went to Campinas, and that was in the 70s. In the 70s in Brazil, we had only two graduate courses in ecology. One up in the Amazon, located in Manaus, Impa, and the other one in Campinas in the State University of Campinas. We had a third one, but it was oriented mostly to limnology. So uh, practically, we grew up as graduate students under the influence of OTS and ATB, now ATBC. And why do I say that? And why I say that? I think there are three main reasons why these two organizations had such a deep impact in the generations of ecologists that were formed in Brazil since the 70s. The first was that we copied the style of the field courses of OTS in our graduate courses. So this gave us this emphasis on field studies and on field research. The second, I think, came from what we read in Biotropica. That was the most important journal for us as we were growing up as graduate students and becoming young scientists. So Biotropica was usually the most expected journal to arrive in the university by my generation. And by reading the, the journal, it, we were caught by this spirit of doing natural history of animals and plants and how animals and plants interact and by describing phenomena in nature. So I think that was the key point to stimulate ecological research in Brazil. And this were inspired by reading Biotropica that had at that time a strong emphasis in natural history in the papers that appeared in the journal and as I said we grew up reading them. So basically we understood that doing science was nothing more than going to the field with a good question in search of trying to know what a given animal do, at what time the animal does that, what tree does the animal visit, what the animal eats, and things like that. What pollinates the plant, who carries the fruit away, things like that. So we were moved by these simple questions that are basically natural history questions and under the influence of Biotropica. Okay. The third thing that I think was important is that by reading Biotropica, we knew that you could do science around the corner. And in Brazil, around the corner, you have a forest and you have a savanna. So science became a nearby profession. So besides stimulating us for natural history, Bio Biotropica was the only journal at that time that was, had a wide circulation and also published papers in Spanish and in Portuguese. So at that time, that was very good for us because we felt like we were in. So our language was part of a then a major journal on tropical ecology and we could be part of it. But at the same time, we, would, we got acquainted with the tropical papers that were being published by the North American community the European community and the Central American community in Biotropica. So uh, as the years passed, our dream as graduate students was to have a paper in Biotropica. We were moved by that <laughs> because that was our favorite journal. <laughs> so then we had the field courses, we had fall to, we have this inclination for natural history, and we had a journal that would welcome our research. So nearly 40 years later, now we have 
more than 30 graduate courses in ecology in Brazil. If we add to this botany, zoology, and oceanography courses, graduate courses, we sum up more than 100 graduate courses in Brazil that, in my view, were born under the influence of the philosophy adopted by ATB, ATBC, and OTS. So I feel like a son of these two organizations <laughs> because I grew up under their influence and under the influence of scientists that created these two organizations. So I'm, I'm very proud to be part of it. My, my link with the society became stronger in 1985 when I went to the San Diego meeting to participate as a judge in the Allen Gentry Award. And since, since then, 20 years ago, nearly, my link with the society became stronger and stronger. I then became part of the council then became editor of the journal for two terms and then president. And the effect that this society had in my professional formation and in my students was immense. And I, I feel that I can speak for many of the Brazilians that became tropical biologists during the past 30, 40 years under the influence of these two organizations. And, uh, but I would, nay, I would uh, say for sure that the three major influences are the, this strong natural history flavor of the two societies, the thing of making a journal that for us, we had this feeling that was a reachable journal, that we could place our research that was done in our neighborhoods in Brazil in our natural environments. The breakage of this language challenge that today we don't have anymore. But for sure it was a great incentive to have an international journal that would welcome our papers even if they were not in English. That was a great incentive. And for shaping the mold that we build up our field courses based on the AT OTS model, 30 days, 40 days in the field, doing small projects and then more long projects by the end of the course with professors uh, monitoring us. So uh, I think that we can say that a whole, a whole generation of tropical ecologists was was formed in Brazil under the strong influence of these two organizations and I think that they had a deep effect on the shape that tropical biology has, has, has in Brazil today and as I was recollecting in the past days about these effects, uh, I, I, I can see that now we have widely circulated books about our major biomes the Atlantic rainforest, the Cerrado savanna, and the Amazon forests that were made by Brazilians that were formed during the past decades. These books are in English. They are read by everyone in Europe and the US. And the vast majority of the contributors are Brazilians, together with North Americans, Central Americans, and European scientists. But the, these books were made in Brazil by Brazilians. So, this is the, the product of the influence that these two organizations had on us uh, as tropical biologists. And we are the only South American country that hosted two meetings of the Association for Tropical Biology and Conservation. One in 2007, if I'm not wrong, in Uberlândia, Minas Gerais. Mm -hmm. And the second one last year, 2007. 12 in Bonito, Mato Grosso. They were very successful meetings. Lots of people came. And Brazil is today one, perhaps the Latin American country that sends most papers 
mm. not only to Biotropica, but no, also but, to mm. many ecology journals and even science and nature and about the ecology that we do in Brazil. So I think that we owe a lot to OTS and ATBC. I think they occupy a firm position. Whenever a student comes to me searching for something to embrace as research, uh, I remind the old days that I read the journal and stimulate the student to find something that you fall in love. What in nature uh, makes you stay awake the whole night <laughs> thinking? So I think that most of our graduate courses are follow this tendency of trying to stimulate the student to find something that, that uh, fascinates him or her. And after that, make questions about that phenomenon that you enjoy studying. What are the interesting questions that you can make about a bird that visits a plant, about uh, an ant that attacks an insect, and so on. So I think that, responding to your questions, we try in our graduate courses to follow the intuition of the students that look for us, and what kinds of interesting questions we, you can make for your thesis, but the most important thing is to find something that you like, a natural history phenomenon that you enjoy studying, and then try to make interesting questions about that, and then you have a research to be done. I think those of natural history in our graduate courses are, are very alive, and I think that they are, uh, they are the very goal of most of the theses that we do there in Brazil. And this is particularly important in a country like, like Brazil because most of the things around the corner we don't know yet because the, the nature is so exuberant and so diverse that uh, we find new species in the university campus. <laughs> and by the way, we, we had a recent book about the birds of our university campus. And it's nearly 1% of all the <laughs> neotropical fauna. It's amazing, in the campus. <laughs> so, so there's a lot to do, and natural history is still the major fuel it, of our research. Do you think that's true throughout uh, South and Central America? I think it is. I cannot say, but I had some experience in Mexico, where I had a collaboration that lasted a few years, and I think that pretty much, uh, and this I think is the, the major influence that OTS and ATBC has put on us. Go out there, find something interesting that you like, and make the simple questions. And then questions can be complicated, as the simple ones are well understood. Then hypotheses can be made. Then experiments can be made and tested. But the first things are you have to know what's happening out there. So I think that's the, the, the major influence that I can perceive that my generation in Brazil received from these two organizations. So the people <laughs> that founded ATB and OTS yeah. were the people that we read. Yeah. So your generation was the ones that were the ones that had the most strong influences on us in Brazil. Two people in particular, two North Americans in particular, I would call attention. And these were Keith, Keith Brown, Jr., the butterfly expert, and Woodruff Benson. These were among the two founders of the graduate course in Brazil in Campinas, where I grew up. So I think these two and the others at IMPA, which mm -hmm. I can speak less, but uh, as far as the southeast of Brazil and the Campinas graduate course where I grew up, as far as I can tell about this, I would pick up these two 
Amer American professionals that came to Brazil to do ecology. They, they created and they stimulated our course to become stronger and stronger. And they were the ones that copied the model from OTS and, and especially Keith Brown that is older, yeah. was one of the founders of ATBC, yeah, yeah. if I re recall correctly. Yeah. Ecology is a very, very young subject in Brazil. It's, 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 in, it's, it's in its infancy, infancy. So I am part of the, I am the first generation of ecologists made in Brazil. So you can see how young this science is in Brazil. And uh, because we are a poor country, and ecology is part of the academic life in Brazil, only for 40 years, 35, 40 years. And because we are big, because uh, we have lots of social problems, ecology, the study of nature, for a long time was regarded as a luxury. Why to study what birds do, what insects do? if you have so many problems related to poverty that you should be studying. You should be studying pests in agriculture. Why to study, why go to the Amazon, to the savanna to study ants? If you sh could be studying leaf cutter ants that cut the plants that end up in our table. This is more important, a practical problem. Yeah. So I grew up under this. So, because of the dictatorship that we had for a long time, so all the educated people were mostly concerned with the social problems of the country. Of course, as the years passed and ecology became more and more popular, and I must say, due also to the international pressure from Europe and the US to protect the Atlantic forest, the Amazon forest, and Pantanal and the Cerrado, our government, due to this international pressure, had to become interested in ecology because of the international pressure. So then, ecology as a science, as a science slowly became an everyday issue on TV. So common people started to look at nature. And we started to have TV programs on ecology. And I must say, I owe a lot to the international pressure on our government. And as this thing became more and more evident, my friends in the club started to think that it was interesting that they had a friend that studied ants. <laughs> and that the things that you study in the field are related to the food that goes to your table. Because if you find natural enemies of caterpillars in the field, this type of interaction can be applied to agriculture. And my friend can be benefited by a research that is done in the forest. So this slowly and slowly be began to take part in the everyday talk of a Brazilian family and ecology became more and more popular. And more importantly, people began to realize that poverty has a lot to do with the preservation of nature. When you have nature preserved, you have a more healthy environment, and this reflects on the, on the well-being of people. So now we realize that pollution, destruction of natural environments are related to poverty. So poor people tend to live in degraded environments. So if you have healthier environments, this will reflect in the well-being of people that depend on nature for their family economy. Fishermen, people that depend on the forest to make a living. So slowly ecology not only became 
the subject of talk during dinner of a Brazilian family, but people began to realize that the preservation of nature has a lot to do with the well-being of Brazilians and has a lot to do with social problems in a way that knowing nature can, can uh, alleviate or mm -hmm. improve some of the, of the problems that uh, poor people uh, experience in the country. So ecology has a lot to do with uh, social science. And at this stage, uh, politicians included ecology and preservation of nature in their agendas. This is part of an issue now for elections. So the last candidate, Marina Silva, had over 20 million votes. And she's a, she's a representative of this preoccupation of natural environments, the preservation of nature, and things like that. So slowly, uh, ecology and preservation of nature is becoming a key issue in the agenda of the country. And so... Uh, this is very good news. So. Paolo, I'm sorry our time is so short. I'd like to talk to you more, but thank you so much for, well, for your reflections. Well, I, I, I am thankful for your invitation, and I am proud to, be, to have been part of this society, ATBC and OTS, and thank you so much for the opportunity to talk a bit about <laughs> your effect in my life and in my country. Thank you. Very good. Thank you.